My name is Stephen Krein. I'm the CEO and managing partner of Startup Health. Since 2011, we've been on a mission to improve the health and well-being of everyone in the world by investing in a global army of entrepreneurs and innovators who are committed to solving the biggest health challenges of our time. We call them health moonshots, like bringing access to care to everyone in the world, ending cancer, like the gynecological cancers that the Caring Lung Foundation cares so deeply about, or mitigating and preventing future pandemics. You know, it's hard to believe, but nine months ago, I was talking about the topic of health moonshots and in particular, the mindsets needed to achieve health moonshots at the Sewn Hearts and Mind Conference right before Seth Fisher spoke. And we were talking about how there's a universal language around achieving health moonshots and this idea that it's most important, the most important part of it is the mindset that you have when you embark on achieving it, whether you're an entrepreneur, an investor, an academic, Health moonshots were difficult even nine months ago, before the pandemic, but COVID-19 ushered in a completely new historical context. The global unpreparedness and the inequities that were exposed by this pandemic have required us to now talk about BC and AC before COVID, in other words, before March, and after COVID, after March. And everybody, whether they're entrepreneurs, investors, or innovators needs to think about what they're working on with this new historical context. My favorite quote that I say so often is that there are decades where nothing happens and then there are weeks where decades happen. This pandemic was one of those times where decades happened in weeks. Now, when you look back historically on what other kinds of challenges we've had in the world that we can kind of harness to use as a model, we look back to the original moon landing. In fact, the original moonshot, which was proclaimed in 1961 by the United States President John F. Kennedy. He proclaimed that he wanted to land a man on the moon and return him safely back to Earth by the end of the decade. None of the technology existed. None of the capital or funding existed. None of the collaborators existed. In fact, everybody was in doubt whether that was possible to be achieved. Nine years later, Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon. But it wasn't an effort by one organization or one by one person. It was actually 400,000 people and 20,000 companies collaborating over years, lots of setbacks, lots of challenges. But the continuity of purpose around a single goal allowed everybody to rally around that, which is why we feel it's so important. And when we're talking about our own mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers, we bring that same ambition and that same boldness to the table. You know, it's ironic, but in 1961, just a couple of weeks after JFK made that speech to Congress, Neil Armstrong was battling his own challenges at home when his daughter Karen was diagnosed with brain cancer. A few short months later, Karen passed away and he persevered through and still achieved a seemingly impossible goal, but not a goal that mattered as much to him as it did to the rest of the world. We thought that was an important way to flip the script and actually look back at Earth. And instead of looking at the moon for what else can we achieve and what else can we discover out in the world, what if just on Earth we looked to achieve health moonshots here, bringing access to care to everyone in the world, no matter how much money they make or where they live, reducing the cost to zero, preventing and curing disease, ending cancer, ending gynecological cancer, prioritizing women's health and children's health, even mitigating and preventing addiction or future pandemics. These are the kinds of moonshots that are worthy of our time, worthy of our investment, and are so seemingly impossible to achieve that they can't be done alone. We need to do it together. So we've discovered over the last nine years that there are mindsets that people have, everybody involved with achieving a health moonshot, similar to what occurred in the 1960s, where there was a whole mindset shift in the 60s about how everyone could rally around that one goal of landing a man on the moon and bring him safely back. There was a long-term commitment, and we think in healthcare, the same kind of long-term commitment is needed to invest in and support companies and organizations working to achieve health moonshots. You need to master a transformational mindset, not a transactional one, very easy, for all of us, especially investors in the room, to focus on short-term transactions and optimizing for short-term returns. But we need to employ a transformational mindset and require that of everyone around us as well. We need to align incentives and get rid of people thinking about stages of companies and only incentivizing short-term 
goals and milestones. We need to think about the long-term impact that we're trying to make with achieving health moonshots. We need to be surrounded by people who are equally ambitious around achieving a health moonshot. Entrepreneurs, innovators, investors from all around the world so that we could be bathing in the same kind of community that we want to be in every day to achieve the health moonshot. We need to transparently share the progress that we're making, the setbacks that we're having, and the achievements that are being made. No different than like in the 60s when you were broadcast every one of the Apollo missions and all the setbacks that were had. These are important things to learn from and to share so others can be involved not only in the journey but in the hope that it provides. We need to collaborate outside of silos, look to others for unique abilities to complement and accelerate innovation and adoption, global industry, academia, and the government. We need to learn faster by leveraging community-driven data, intelligence, and insights. And finally, the most important one for me, which is to be batteries included, giving energy versus draining energy to those people who are working every day on achieving health moonshots. For the last nine years, we've been working on this model where we deploy capital into entrepreneurs and companies working to achieve health moonshots and then support them all along their journey. We have a collaboration platform to make sure that everybody has a way to collaborate and gather and learn from each other what works and what doesn't work, who's helpful and who's not helpful. And we've got a community of collaborators. We call them health transformers. These are the individuals, almost the superheroes, who are working day in and day out with collaborative partners to achieve the health moonshots. Over the last nine years, we've invested in 335 companies in 26 countries, and we're just getting started. And I'll leave you with this. You can either be batteries included or batteries not included in all of your interactions. Which one are you? Uh, our conviction for how urgent and important and the speed at which we need to execute and invest and support entrepreneurs and innovators and organizations all around the world who are working on health moonshots. It's gone from a want to a need. And I think, and if the pandemic has taught us anything, is that it can happen and we need to collaborate and break down the silos of working alone, not just geographically, but even locally. Uh, mindset matters most. Um, you know, I, my whole talk today was about mindset because at the end of the day, if you're backing an entrepreneur or an innovator or an organization, or you are an investor backing these organizations, your mindset matters most. Your long-term commitment, your transformational mindset, and all the characteristics I went through really do matter most. It's difficult, but we believe with a long-term commitment to achieving health moonshots, and people with the right mindset around the table, it's gonna be possible.